he got he knelt down and he got his medal pinned to him and it just so she didn't really say much she just said it well done or something and it just by some awful awful uh, embarrassing uh, bad luck um, he happened to let rip with a mighty fart at, at exactly this moment. And it was the moment the Queen steps back, which she done, and it made it look as if she had stepped back because he'd, <laughs> he'd let one go, as it were. So he walked backwards and then turned around, blushing furiously. And then to make his day worse, at the end of it, when the press gather round and everyone's in their shiny top hats and everything, all, obviously a huge crowd of press descended on Francis Bacon and, and, and one member of the Bradford Inquirer, or whatever it might be, was, was sort of asking questions of this forlorn fellow. Um, and Francis, who didn't particularly like talking to the press, and said, oh, well, there was nothing very interesting, but that man was interesting. He, he virtually farted in the Queen's face. <laughs> And the press just chased it. He said, the last I saw of him, his hat was bouncing on the cobbles and he was running around the corner. I just thought it was the most wonderful story. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Lambeth Walk. Oh, my. There's a thing. Yes. Well, you're uh, 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 seeking to elicit, I must assume. Uh, I am seeking to elicit. <laughs> the story of, uh, in 1984-ish, um, my agent, who was a man called Richard Armitage, um, who had come to Cambridge when I was there with um, Hugh Laurie and Emma Thompson and Tony Slattery. We were on the footlights, and he sort of scooped us up in, in his uh, JCB, and, uh, and uh, we all became his clients. And he was a marvellous man. He had an old Italian tie and a Bentley and uh, cigars. Very old-fashioned and very delightful. Um, w one weekend, he invited me to his house in the country, which, is in, which was called Stebbing, um, and uh, in, in Essex, in that nice part of Essex, around about Dunmo, you know, it's a very much underrated part of an underrated county. And um, uh, he started talking to me about himself, which he never did. He was a very old-fashioned, sort of rather growly um, uh, Englishman. And uh, he talked about, he said, my father, um, my father was called Reginald Armitage. I said, hmm. Yeah, and and um, my grandparents made their money making pomfret cakes in South Yorkshire. So that's uh, like Pontefract, but yes, pronounced pomfret, right? Okay, pomfret <laughs> cakes. Um, and, uh, but my father, Reginald, was very musically gifted. Uh, he went to Cambridge, and then he went to the Royal College of Music, um, and then he was appointed organist at St Anne's Soho, right? And he heard a lot of modern music being played in his day, jazz music, um, and he turned out to have rather a facility for composing tunes. I said, well, gosh, that's interesting. He said, yes. Um, so, but he thought that it was rather embarrassing to the family name to use his own, so he invented a pseudonym under which he could compose, which was Noel Gay. I said, right. And so she said, and that's, I know it's an odd name now, but in the time, uh, it was very 30s, it's sunbursts and no gay. It was, uh, and under that name, he was a very successful composer, and he wrote many songs, and The Sun Has Got His Hat On, Hey Little Hen, Let's Have a Tiddly at the Milk Bar, um, The Lambeth Walk, uh, Leaning on a Lamp Post, and, and so on. I said, gosh, that's a, that's a great litany of... 30s in songs. Yes, and many of these were written into a musical called Me and My Girl. I said, wow. Um, anyway, so gosh, it's getting late. I, I'll probably go to bed. He said, so here it is. And he pulled out this strange fool's cap. For those of you who are too young to know what fool's cap is, it was like what the standard paper size before the European A4 arrived, a little bit taller and thinner. I guess you could put it into a dunce's shape, which is why it was called that. But anyway. Um, <laughs> I don't know, why else would it be called Fool's Cap? I don't know. Um, so, um, he gave me this typescript. It was an old typescript, you know, where there were sort of orange rust marks where, where, you know, where the punch holes had, you know, gone. And so I, he said, I'd like you to read it. So it was the show, me and my girl. So I, I read it. He said, and, and the next morning he said, what did you think? I said, well, it's very interesting.